Good morning. How are you today? Today, I will show you about the chemical toxics and Minamata disease in our third lecture of International Framework for Environmental Protection. Are you doing okay? It is so cold these days in Japan, isn't it? Even here in Japan, in Nagoya, it is snowing. Not so much, but uh, it comes from the northern area of Japan. So let's get started with this lecture three about the chemical toxics. The keywords today is chemical toxics, Minamata disease, and endocrine disruptors. So let's go about the chemical toxics. And what is the chemical toxics? It is the presence in or introduction into the environment of a substance which has harmful or poisonous effects. And because of the chemical toxics, we have water pollution. And water pollution is the presence of undesirable substances in the water. And uh, almost uh, every kind of chemical toxics are POPs, that is persistent organic pollutants, POPs. And POPs are harmful chemicals contained in the polluted water. And as the name indicates, persistent. It is very persistent. It doesn't decompose easily. So it remains in the nature for hundred and uh, thousand of years until it decomposes. So, uh, Let's see about the toxic waste. Waste is considered toxic if it is poisonous, radioactive, explosive, carcinogenic. This carcinogenic means causing cancer. Mutagenic, this means causing damage to chromosomes. So this uh, affects the babies. Teratogenic, this means causing birth defects. This is also a very serious problem. And they are bioaccumulative. That is increasing in concentration at the higher ends of food chains. So bioaccumulative, means that the uh, chemical toxics doesn't go out from our body. It will accumulate in our fats, in, in the cells, in the fat of the cells. So, uh, let's see about the sources of toxic chemicals. If uh, they are in, improperly disposed, wastewater from industrial plants, for example, chemical process facilities of lead, mercury, chromium, and surface runoff containing pesticides used on agricultural areas, Suburban loans, as for example, chlordane, deodorant, heptachlor. These are the pesticides and insecticides. So uh, they are the sources of toxic, toxic chemicals. One type of these chemicals is PCBs. PCB means polychlorinated biphenyls. 
This is very common substances that humans use a lot. Now it's banned. And the polychlorinated biphenyls, PCBs, are a family of 209 congenerals or structurally similar organic chemicals. So there are 209, but very uh, similar organic chemicals in the same family, ranging from oily liquids to oxy solids. And there are 12 PCBs that are dioxin-like and can similarly be toxic and non-toxic. One dioxin-like PCB is 3445-tetrachlorobiphenyl. This is used as a base for the um, threshold of the toxicity internationally. And PCBs are synthetic and produced either as a singular congener, as a homogeneous group, or as a mixture. And what are the properties and usages of PCB? Well, uh, PCB is non-flammable, stable, and have a high boiling point and exhibit electrical insulating properties. As such, PCBs have been used as coolants and lubricants in transformers and other electrical equipment, as hydraulic fluids, and as plasticizers, pigments, dyes, and carbonless copy paper ink. They are also generated and released into the environment as waste byproducts of chemical manufacturing and incineration. So it is all around our uh, living, living environment. This is the PCB molecule. Each PCB molecule contains two phenyl rings, this ring and another ring. A phenyl ring is a ring of six carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. In this, each, each edge, we have the carbon. To which hydrogen atoms are attached. So hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. In PCBs, one or several chlorine atoms replace some of these hydrogen atoms. For example, here, instead of hydrogen, there is the uh, chlorine, chlorine here. Here is also chlorine instead of hydrogen. The two rings in a PCB molecule can rotate around the bond connecting them, rotate. Depending on where the chlorine atoms are located, the two rings of a specific PCB, we either lie approximately in the same plane, coplanar PCBs, or lie in different, more per perpendicular planes, as this is the case, non-planar PCBs. This is in this uh, area. This is per perpendicular to this area. This is the coplanar PCBs. Uh, these two are in the same plane. And the coplanar PCBs are considered to be most toxic based on combined health effects, or effects considerations. They are also referred to as dioxin-like. These are the dioxins. Coplanar PCB or dioxin. So these chemicals accumulate in the body of different animals. First, it, it comes from the sea, from the water. Plankton, 
will have the have the, this, uh, for example, PCB. And then the bottom feeders, also like shrimp, will have them. Then the small fish, poach or smelt, can have this plankton. And we have volei, cohosomum, and co cohosomum is uh, eaten by cormorant or herring go. And then the bald eagle can eat them. And at last, it reaches humans. So in this, uh, in this current, bioaccumulation will uh, develop. So we have also uh, within the POPs, endocrine disruptors. So endocrine disruptors are POPs chemicals. And I recommend that you watch this video on our stolen feature. Our stolen feature was uh, a book written by Theo Coburn and Myers. And she uh, was uh, the biologist and she uh, wrote about the endocrine disruptors, about the chemicals that uh, affects the reproductive organs of mammals, of birds and reptiles. This is the presentation by Dr. John Peterson Myers. And she, he also uh, wrote the book, Our Stolen Future, together with the Cobon. And he's founder, CEO, and chief scientist of environmental health sciences. You can also uh, read the articles written by this Dr. Myers. So now let's see what is the health effects of endocrine disrupting chemicals. Theo Coburn, uh, she is the first author of the, the book, Our Stolen Future. And she's founder and president of the Endocrine Disruption Exchange based in Peonia, Colorado, and professor emeritus of zoology at the University of Florida, Gainesville. And she's an environmental health analyst and best known for her studies on the health effects of endocrine disrupting chemicals. So I recommend that you watch this video on letter to the president about the chemicals disrupting our bodies, Theo Corbon. The first uh, woman biologist that uh, said about the chemicals, pesticides, insecticide, was Rachel Carson. And after she died in 1964, many researchers continued this uh, research on the chemicals. And Theo Kobo and Myers discovered that these chemicals are also endocrine disruptors. So this is also a very serious discovery. And Dr. Coburn's work has prompted the enactment of new laws around the world. It redirected the research of academicians, governments, and the private sector. In the spirit of ideas world spreading, TEDx is a program of local self-organized events that bring people together to share a TED-like experience. At the TEDx event, TED Talks video and live speakers combine to spark deep discussion and connection in a small group. These local self-organized events are branded TEDx, where X equal independently organized TED event. 
And the TED conference provides general guidance for the TEDx program, but individual TEDx events are self-organized. So now let's see at this serious accident of deep water horizon. This happened 10 years ago and it still continues polluting the ocean of Mexican Gulf. So I recommend also that you uh, watch this video on oil spill disaster of Deep Horizon. And the content is the oil-based Deep Horizon explosion. And after explosion, it sank on April 20th, 2010 in the Mexico Bay. The accident happened eight kilometers southeast from the coast of Louisiana and released over 130 million gallons of crude oil into the Gulf of Mexico. And it was the biggest oil spill ever in the United States. And waters and remains, one of the worst environmental disasters in world history. 11 workers of BP, British Petroleum Company, died in that accident. With this accident, the sea nearby was affected by the oil spill for months. How was the damage of the disaster to the ecosystem? Whales of the Mexico Bay were almost extinct. In the coastal area of islands of Louisiana, many seabirds were affected by the oil spill and most part of them died. 10 years later, BP oil spill continues to harm wildlife, especially dolphins. And we have so many uh, oil tanker spill. Uh, not every year, but almost uh, repeating three years or five years, 10 years. So this is uh, another one. Recent oil tanker spill in 2018. Sanchi Iranian oil tanker spill of China may have lasting environmental impacts. This is the video of National Geographic of one minute. And we also have this oil spill disaster of deep horizon frontline to spill season 2010, episode 15. I recommend that you watch this video also. In last year, a Japanese ship wrecked at the coast of Mauritius Island in Africa. And it was also very serious accident. And uh, many, many seabirds, sea animals died because of that accident. Now let's see about the Minamata disease. Another <clears throat> serious problem of the chemicals. This happened in Japan, in Southern uh, Island, Kyushu, uh, Kumamoto Prefecture. And this is a typical example of the pollution related health damage in Japan. And it was first discovered in 1956 around Minamata Bay in Kumamoto Prefecture in Kyushu. And in 1965, in the Agano River Basin in Niigata Prefecture, this is in, in the mainland of Japan. So the, we can uh, see that they didn't learn uh, anything on this accident and repeated the same type, same type of accident in 1965. So, uh, we can take a look at the uh, Ministry of Environment of Japan's homepage. 
about this Minamata disease. So you should take a look at this. This is in English, so you can understand reading in English, the history and measures. So I'll explain something about the Minamata disease. Contamination by Matthew Mercury of Chiso Company in the early 1950s. Since the discovery of the disease, investigation of the cause has been made. Only in 1968, the government announced that the Minamata disease was caused by the consumption of fish and shellfish contaminated by methyl mercury compound discharged from a chemical plant. It was released uh, when they were producing the aceto aldehyde. It's a um, chemical uh, substance product. And in, during this process, they used the methyl mercury, mercury. So that's why the bioaccumulation of this substance injured the health of many, many uh, cats, dogs, and people. The symptoms of Minamata disease is very serious. Minamata disease is a disorder of the central nervous system. And it shows various signs and symptoms, including sensory disturbance in the distal portions of four extremities, ataxia, concentric contraction of the visual field, and so on. And not everybody, every population of Minamata uh, were certified as a patient of Minamata. So at the end of March 2001, 2,955 Minamata disease patients have been certified, of which 2,265 patients have been located on Yatsuhiro, Yatsushiro Sea Coast. Due to the clinical and protective measures taken after the discovery of the disease, Minamata disease no longer seems to occur in Japan. Instead, Minamata city today is an environmental example city. So, uh, a short clip about industrial mercury poisoning at Minamata Bay, Japan. We can watch some videos on mercury poisoning the Minamata story, three minutes. Another one is about the patient of Minamata, Shinobu Sakamoto. She's a Minamata disease survivor. And she was, uh, her mother was pregnant of her when she caught this disease. So even babies, in the pregnant babies, uh, in pregnant mothers, uh, they can cut this Minamata disease. Now let's uh, see. Let's see about the another uh, accidents on chemicals. This is a, a, an example of a Chinese petrochemical factories accident that happened in 2005, <clears throat> November 13th. Two fuel towers exploded at PetroChina's facility in Jilin City, China, a petrochemical factory constructed in the mid 1950s. And the refinery is owned by a subsidiary of the state owned China National Petroleum Corporation. And we can have a look at these videos. This Songhua River spill, 
China's pollution crisis. Another one is Jilin chemical plant explosion. Cause of Jilin chemical plant blasts found. And with this accident, spill of 100 tons of benzene, nitrobenzene and related compounds into the Songhua River uh, was found. And although the explosions at the plant, plant killed five people, triggered the evacuation of an estimated 10,000 people of the region. And that Approximately 10 days passed before Chinese government officials issued the first public reports of the spill. Other industrial pollution in China, 2005. An explosion at the Southwestern Chinese chemical plant in November had killed one, injured three, and triggered warnings of benzene contamination. Uh, this is from the Platts International Petrochemical Report. According to a smelter accident in the Guangdong province, resulted in cadmium contamination of the Beijing River. This is uh, the source is Associated Press Report of December 2005. Other industrial pollution in China also in 2005. The recent, we cannot uh, see because of the sanction of, sanction of the country. A frozen pipe rupture in the Henan province resulting in a diesel slick on the Yellow River. In the January 6, 2006, press release, China's Environmental Protection Administration reported over 45 water pollution related incidents in the previous 80 days, including six major disasters. And the Chinese environmental problems are not limited to industrial spells. The South China Morning Post reports that since November of 2005, at least 282 coal miners have perished in a series of mine accidents in China with a far greater number over the course of the year. As well as COVID-19, China doesn't allow international inspection. The deputy administrator of the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Office of International Affairs has stated that China declined offers from the United States to send a response team. In turn, the United Nations response team that went to China was reportedly not allowed to visit the site or take water samples, just like COVID-19 researchers. So, we have to see also the downstream city Harbin and Russia affected by the polluted water because of this accident. The initial misinformation prompted disbelief and according to some reports, unfounded rumors that the announcement was in response to predictions of an earthquake. All the while, the spell continued to migrate downstream through much population centers and towards the Amur River in Russia. Because river is uh, continuing to other countries. So Amur River, Russia affected. Jilin blast location is in Northeast of China and Harbin with 4 million people suffered most influence of polluted river. Fishermen continue to fish and people presumably continue to drink from the stretch of river between Jilin City and Harbin, having had no information to suggest they should do otherwise. So now let's take a look at toxic chemicals, DDT. 
DDT is the abbreviation for dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. Very long. So that's why we call DDT. Uh, DDT was uh, used as insecticide. It was discovered by the German Mueller in 1938. And it was used all over the world for not being strong toxic to the humans. But it, to tell you the truth, it is very toxic to the humans. Pops, uh, DDT is pops, long half-life, highly cumulative in the animals. And DDT is also endocrine disruptors. It affects the reprodu reproductive organs of the living animals including humans. Usage of DDT in developed, developing countries. Developed countries is not using DDT anymore, but developed countries continues using. In October, 1999, a meeting was held at UNEP, Genève, and the discussion about the ban on DDT worldwide was done. But cases of malaria in the world are 30 million yearly with 10 million deaths, according to WHO. So health risks are bigger than ecological risk due to the ban on DDT. So it still continues being used. DDT was not banned. Now let's see in Japan, decline of pups within women's milk in Japan. This axis is the uh, concentration, picograms per gram TEQ. So this TEQ is the uh, dioxin that is considered as uh, the indices one. And this is in 1970 to 2000. You can see here that in the milk, within the milk of mothers, it contained a uh, coplanar PCBs. This coplanar PCBs is dioxin, is dioxin. And PCDDs, this PCDDs continue and PCDFs, this declined a lot in 2000. So now it is uh, below the uh, threshold of WHO. That's why we do not need to uh, report about the uh, pops within the milk of mothers. But in 1970s, it was too high. This is the amount of dioxin. Coplanar PCBs is dioxin. So let's see about the ban on DDT in the USA, United States, and Japan. A research was carried in the five Great Lakes of the United States from the early 60s to 70s. Eggshell of the seabirds was becoming thinner, making incubation difficult because of DDT or PCB or POPs. In 1972, the use of DDT was prohibited in the United States. In Japan, industries were put to ban on it in 1969 and ban on use in 1972. In developed countries, it is not used. However, it is still used in 30 developing countries. Now, let's take a look at this uh, article that was in this environmental science about the trouble with neonicotinoids written by Francisco Sanchez Bayo 
of Faculty of Agriculture and Environment, the University of Sydney. He says that four decades ago, DDT and other pesticides that cause environmental harm were banned. Since then, newly developed pesticides have had to conform to stricter environmental standards. Yet recent studies highlight the subtle but deadly impacts of neonicotinoids, the most widely used insecticides in the world on ecosystems. In contrast to other insecticides, neonicotinoids are systemic, meaning that they are highly soluble and thus absorbed by the plant. They produce delayed mortality in arthropods after chronic exposure to sublethal doses, but are not very toxic to vertebrates. It has taken more than a decade to unravel some of the mechanisms through which neonicotinoids affect the integrity of ecosystems. Although gaps in knowledge remain, there is a strong case for stricter regulation of these pesticides. We know, we know uh, nowadays that uh, bees are declining and especially in Europe and Japan, uh, there are few bees. So it is very serious ecological problem. So now let's take a look at the acceptable daily intake. This is the amount determined by the usage rules of the non-poisonous portion of the chemical at the poisonous test. This is the chart that indicates this. This is the poisonous test and in this poisonous test, uh, we establish this ADI, acceptable daily intake, this part. And this is another portion, very little portion, uh, that is established as the uh, threshold of the concentration of this uh, insecticide or pesticide or these chemicals. So let's now see about the NOEL and ADI, NOEL and ADI, the relationship between them. NOEL is the ab abbreviation for non observable effective dose milligram of chemicals per body weight of humans, kilogram per day. This is NOEL. And ADI, as we saw in the slide, the previous slide, acceptable daily intake is uh, NOEL, NOEL divided by 100. Why 100? This is the safety indices, one power 100. It's obtained considering as 10 times the difference between human and test animal. 10 times the personal difference. That is the indices that tell safety for any accidental situation. And we have to understand about the units of quantity and the concentration of the chemicals. Million, we indicate with uh, six power of 10 billion, nine, ninth power of 10 billion, trillion, 12th power of 10. In milligrams, we can uh, represent using this uh, 10 minus three power of 10 grams, three powered 10 micrograms 
equals uh, six power of 10 nanogram equals a ninth power of 10 picograms. So we use a lot of very tiny, tiny microscopic uh, units. Why we use these units? Because the baby in a pregnant mother, the uh, very, very uh, beginning is this size micrograms or picograms. So it affects the baby. That's why we have to take uh, much care about this uh, microscopic con concentration, not only for humans, but also for every living animals. So that's why we have to understand uh, these units. A mi mi milligram, microgram, nanogram, picogram, ppm, part per million. Uh, part per million, we can represent by milligram per kilogram, microgram per gram, or nanogram per milligram, or a milliliter per cubic meter. PPMV equals milliliter per cubic meter. PPB, part per billion. PPB equals microgram per kilogram equals nanogram per gram. PPT, per, part per trillion. PPT equals nanogram per kilogram equals picogram per gram. And now let's see about the threshold of toxic, toxicological concern, TTC. The threshold of toxicological concern, TTC, is a concept that refers to the establishment of a level of exposure for all chemicals, whether or not there are chemical specific toxicity data below which there would be no appreciable risk to human health. The, th the term threshold is used to indicate the amount of intake or the exposure of a chemical without a potential of adverse effects. It's a very important word. Unlike other non-cancerous symptoms, when a carcinogen infiltrates a gene to create cancer cells, there's no minimum level or, of carcinogen without the possibility of causing cancer. Even the lowest level of carcinogen is still considered to have a potential of causing cancer. So about the threshold, if a chemical has the potential of exhibiting adverse effects, unless the exposure level is zero, none, this chemical is considered as having no threshold. Conversely, if a chemical has a minimum effective exposure level that doesn't exhibit adverse effects, the chemical is considered to have a threshold. So uh, let's see the example for this threshold of toxic chemicals in the water. This is in Japan, Japan Ministry of Environment. This is the th threshold for cadmium. Cadmium. This is a poisonous chemical. Under 0.01 milligram, milligram per liter. Cyan, none. Must not be detected. If it is detected, that uh, water cannot be used. Lead. Uh, less than 0 0.01 milligram per liter. Hexavalent chromium, less than 0 0.05 milligram per liter. Arsenic, less than 0 0.01 milligram per liter. Mercury, less than 0 0.0005 milligram per liter. This caused the Minamata disease. 
So if it has more than this amount, very microscopic amount, but even so, it is prohibited. PCB must not be detected equals zero. If it is detected, it is very serious. Dichloromethan, less than 0 0.02 milligram per liter. One, two, dichloroethan, less than 0 0.004 milligram per liter. Trichloroethylene, less than 0 0.03 milligram per liter. Tetrachloroethylene, less than 0 0.01 milligram per liter. And benzene is also very toxic, less than 0 0.01 milligram per liter. And in the United States, there are four regulated substances that have concentration qualifiers by the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States. Ammonia, concentration of 20% or greater. Hydrochloric acid, concentration of 37% or greater. Hydrogen fluoride, per hydrofluoric acid, concentration of 50% or greater. And nitric acid, concentration of 80% or greater. So they are regulated. And this is the, the indices of the percentage. So let's take a look at this no AEL. This is the same of the NOEL as we saw before. No observed adverse effects level. And also the TDI, tolerable daily intake. If you'd like to see, you can uh, take a look at this homepage of Japan National Institute of Technology and Evaluation. There is also the amount causing carcinogenesis at a probability of one per 100,000 as VSD, virtually safe dose, instead of adopting NOEL or TDI. Carcinogenicity through injury of genes and mutagenicity and so on through activity on germ cells are now considered to have no threshold. If there is no threshold, it can't be detected. It's more severe. And this is the graph showing about the a threshold. This is the VSD, virtually safe dose, and this is the threshold, this red curve, a level where no hazards appear. This x-axis represents the chemical exposure, and this y-axis represents the frequency of hazards. So if there's no threshold, the, it is the safer one, virtually safe those in blue. And if it is a poisonous chemical, we have the threshold. And you can have, uh, you can be detected, but in a smaller dose uh, below the standards that I show, I have shown in the slide before. So this is depending on the substances, those response curve. So we have to uh, see the chemicals uh, plotted in this graph and it uh, will make, make you more clear to understand about the uh, danger of these chemicals. So, This is the graph for the what is NOEL, no observed adverse effect level. 
And if you can, if you'd like to understand more, it, it is of National Institute of Technology and Evaluation. It is written in English. This is the Japanese uh, agency, but it is very uh, useful. And let us see about the chemicals that are affecting other countries. Arsenic contamination in Bangladesh. Acute problem in tube wells obstructing groundwater from 10 meters to 100 meter depth is a very uh, serious problem in Bangladesh. The presence of arsenic is natural in the soil, but it may cause skin diseases and cancer if people drink it every day because it is cumulative substance. Arsenic is very poisonous. The level of arsenic allowed in drinking water is 0.01 milligrams per liter by WHO. And the causes of water pollution in Bangladesh are industrialization and urbanization, agrochemicals, fecal pollution, ship breaking and lube oil discharge, oil and lube spillage, low water flow, lack of control and application of law, and lack of awareness and campaign. So we have so many, many uh, problems of chemicals in different countries, especially in the developing countries. And as for example, in uh, countries uh, that is not democrat democratic countries, they do not uh, show the data for the other countries. So they uh, try to hide uh, the accidents or poisonous chemical products that are thrown in the rivers. So we never know about the uh, truth. So we have to be more cautious about that kind of uh, chemicals, toxic chemicals in the, and the harms that they uh, affect humans. So for now, it's that, that's all for today. And thank you very much for watching. And I hope you found something new. And I, I would, I'd be very glad if you, you'd like to study more about this chemical, uh, these toxic chemicals because they are everywhere in all the world, everywhere, okay? So thank you very much. And for patience of uh, watching and until the end of this lecture. And I hope to see you again in another lecture, lecture four. So bye for now and keep healthy. Bye-bye. Thank you.